The winner of the 2024 Solar Builder Project of the Year over 10 megawatts category as voted on by the readers is the Escalante Solar Project in Pruitt, New Mexico. This 238 megawatt utility scale solar project was built across 1700 acres on the site of a former coal-fired power plant. Developed by the Tri-State Generation and Transmission Association and Orgis Energy, the solar array will serve Tri-State's customers and is part of the association's responsible energy plan. Here to talk about the project are Kevin Basilic, president of Gridworks, and John Hunter, project director of Gridworks, the EPC and installer for the Escalante Solar Project. Solar Builders 2024 Project of the Year Awards are sponsored by Aurora Solar. Learn more at aurorasolar.com. How did Gridworks become involved with the Escalante Solar Project? We had a relationship with the original early stage developer of the project, Turning Point Energy. We built a small project for them in Arkansas, and that was sort of strategic on our part. Uh, we knew that they were involved in the development of this Escalante project and, and had or were negotiating an offtake agreement with, with Tri-State. And we had some familiarity with the site from, from a, a DG project that we explored many years ago that didn't come to fruition. And as Orgis acquired that asset from Turning Point, we worked pretty proactively with them from um, an early stage of the project. There was a little bit of you know, development engineering support. Um, it's a pretty challenging site. John, could you kind of mention, you know, what were some of the biggest challenges of installing this, the solar array at the former coal-fired facility? So there was, you know, a, of course, you know, around the facility, there was a ton of easements that we had to work through with project constraints. We had easements that shifted midway through design just because of records, you know, dating back in, in the jurisdictions that weren't that clear. So we, as we were working through design, progressing to try to maintain the schedule, our engineering team noticed issues. We had to take a step back, but, you know, the client was concerned with the commercial operation dates and interconnect dates. So we formulated a plan with them to move forward to work through as we are still developing design. The geological situation on the, around the coal facility on the west side has actual rock that's shallow. So we would have to drill in there. On the east side, we had like a harder clay that impacted dry, you know, drive times and driving abilities for pile installs. The northern side was very sandy. We had all these historical or archaeological areas due to the reservation being nearby. But as we were working through the engineering issues with the schedule overall, like the project from start to mechanical completion was eight months. Um, the client had a very accelerated schedule due to uh, interconnect. So we had to coordinate a lot of what can we do concurrently with grading, all that stuff. The whole north side of the site was grading. There was a two about a 2% slope from the northwest to the southeast we had to manage. As we worked through the site, there was, you know, little floodway areas when there would be, you know, massive rainfalls that we'd have to manage and arroyos um, that we had to work with to make sure we could fit the arrays. And there was just a lot of constraints. What would you say were some of the, the biggest innovations that your team put forth to kind of overcome those challenges? The biggest innovations we had to do, I mean, we did a lot of, we, we put a lot of heat maps out there from the grading perspective to see how we could get concurrent underground electrical install, you know, where our cut fill stuff worked. If we had cuts that were too deep, could we go in that area beforehand where to prioritize civil to get out ahead? We did have certain access point restrictions with easements that we had to work through with the client to be able to get to other parts of the property. Instead of us having to build a road from the east side of the project to the west side, which would have been about four, four miles worth of road, we were able to use an existing road that already transversed that that the client didn't originally have an easement on, but Tri-State granted that to them. Biggest thing we did is just the coordination of the electrical effort with our civil and then racking was falling right on top of it with pile install. I mean, we normally you like to schedule about three weeks in between <laughs> on projects of, you know, disciplines. We were I mean, our disciplines were probably within a couple of days of each other throughout that whole project. And it was just, you know, massive coordination every morning, figuring out where to move crews, how to keep crews going. And that's that's where we really innovated was just the constant challenging our site teams to, you know, if something was to fail, what's your next move? How many people were involved in the project? At peak, it was right around 440. Like our peak manpower was right when winter was starting to get hit, hit us too in December was when we were carrying those numbers. And, you know, when things get cold, you're wearing thicker gloves. It's harder to handle the material. You lose hardware. So we really worked on hardware management. And kind of speaking more from a, a broader perspective and working with your client, how, how will this project help Tri-State Generation meet uh, its sustainability goals? The 
Energy Transition Act, Brad, was passed in 2019 in New Mexico, which at the time was was pretty progressive because it sort of laid out a pathway to get to a 100% carbon-free electricity generation, um, I think by 2050. And at the time, that was a pretty, to some degree, controversial legislative package, right? Um, I think a lot of the folks in the utility space probably thought those targets were far too aggressive and not feasible to hit. And so one of those interim targets was 50% clean energy generation by 2030. So, you know, Tri-States announced and been public that this project was sort of key part of them being able to achieve that 50% carbon-free generation in New Mexico five years ahead of schedule. So five years ahead of schedule is a big, big deal, especially for G&T, like Tri-State that's got to be like geographically, it's going to huge service territory and just kind of speaking more locally with with the benefits of the project how are you seeing escalante impact the local community where this project was built yeah i mean i think it's a big impact um it's a fairly remote area um and obviously there's a there's a non-trivial impact to that community when a facility like escalante on the coal side gets shut down and, and and job loss or job shifts that come with that there's also a huge impact to the community vis-a-vis the tax package so I think what's been reported publicly, it's it's close to $10 million in tax benefit for the county and the local school district just from this project that in the absence of it, you know, would have been would have been zero, right? And net tax loss from the tax base of the coal plant. And then there's obviously a lot of construction jobs that were born out of it, folks that we've hired. All of our team was in Grants, New Mexico, which is about 30 minutes away. Um, it, and that was a community that, you know, when the Escalante facility shut down, you know, they, they did get impacted. Um, but you'd go out to dinner there and you'd see half the, half the, uh, restaurant was guys from the site, <laughs> but it was, it was good. And we did retain a lot of, we did find a lot of good workforce force out there that was local that we have transitioned to other projects that, uh, have continued to stay with us. Do you have anything you'd like to add or any closing comments? We appreciate the recognition. It's a, it's a challenging project. John and the team did an exceptional job. It's also a beautiful site. And I think there's some cool symbolism when you see it, especially from the air of this sort of coal plant that, I mean, it literally looks like it's getting swallowed or enveloped by a, by a PV array. So there's some serious symbolism there that really fits with the, not only the Energy Transition Act in New Mexico and the specific targets in that legislation, but just sort of broadly what's happening in the industry with coal resources retiring and being replaced by solar. In this case, they're just, you know, you can literally see it happening. It's, it's surrounding the coal plant and, uh, and it's a beautiful site.